Teslas are a lot of fun in a straight line, but what people may not realize is they're also pretty good in the curves. They're pretty good in loose gravel and sand and dirt. They're pretty good overall. And I guess if the question is, is can you race it? Well, I can think of nobody more qualified to answer that question than perhaps somebody who actually races them. So maybe, just maybe, we'll get a chance to talk one of these days or minutes with Blake Fuller, who is a race car driver without exception, no two ways about it. I'm Brian. Uh, welcome to my Tesla weekend. Yeah. yeah. We're going to go? Would you believe? Yeah. I'm here at Tesla, Ta Tesla Con Florida talking with Blake Fuller. Did you know he has driven a Tesla? Is that true? No, I've never driven a Tesla before, but I hear they're fast. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like to go fast? I want to go fast. Yeah, and yeah. actually, I like cars that go fast, so this one's good. You know, it's fun. Uh, there's this very challenging uh, course called Pikes Peak, and uh, Blake has a little bit of experience with it. Do you know who the current record holder is at Pikes Peak for EVs? Somebody, their name rhymes with mine and spelled the same way. <laughs> and he looks like you, too. Yeah. <laughs> and he looks like you, too. There's a video. I'll put up some B-roll of it now. I'm assuming it's on your channel. I can grab that. Absolutely, yes. And it is, by the way, this footage is not sped up. This is insane. Yeah. It is insane. It is a balancing act. It's not enough that you are uh, fearless. Fearless people die. You have to have just enough fear to actually kick butt and not die. Yeah. So I understand you peel some weight out to get it race ready. Yeah. Not counting what you add back in for safety, how much weight do you peel out? So I don't know the exact answer as the car sits today. Right. Um, and I'm gonna, the, I'm gonna give you two answers. One, sure. of them, one of them is that this particular car, about 100 to 200 pounds, depending on the wheel tire setup, Right. between your original Plaid and how we raced it at Pikes right. Peak in 2022. Right. But it speaks to how good Tesla has been making their cars lighter because right. our 2016 car was almost 400 pounds lighter because wow. the interior components, wow. everything, were so much heavier, so much more complicated. So in simplifying, the amount of weight you lose is not quite as much. So you end up racing this at what, 4,700 pounds? What do you? Yeah, so it's just, that's a really good guess. Um, it comes in either side of 4,700 pounds, depending on the setup. Yeah. And that is really good considering what it does. Yeah. Now you're running awfully close to stock. Yeah, absolutely. And so we're, the class we're in is considered production electric vehicle and the entire intention is to only install from a rule standpoint things that enhance safety so tires that are speed capable wheels that are speed capable we have the nrs brakes we have carbon brakes on here from unplugged so braking and wheels and tires and safety gear that's it and that's it so the battery is stock battery battery management yep. the software stock yep. uh, Really all you did is tear a bunch of stuff out, yeah. change the wheels and tires. Yeah, it looks like the car got robbed, and then yeah. we put a bunch of safety equipment in it, so yeah. it was pretty good. Now, there are more uh, worlds to conquer. Yeah. You're making runs at uh, Washington, at uh, Mount Washington. Yeah, so the one you watched, actually, that looks sped up, that was Mount Washington. Yeah. Pikes Peak, so at Pikes Peak, we have two records, okay. um, both with electric production. One of them is in my 2016 Model S. Right. The other is in the 2020 Model 3 Performance. Right. We would have beaten the record this year, but this year, um, which you can grab some of that footage too, it was, sure. it was totally fogged out. You wouldn't be able to see 100 feet. So that really slowed everything down. Oh, yeah. um, Mount Washington, we have two records. We went there for one, which would have been a production electric, right. and we ended up actually being faster than the modified electric car. Whoa. So, so right now... And what was the modified? Um, the modified actually was a, like a spec Formula Ford style, like okay. a spec Ford. Um, that had been modified with an electric motor and powertrain and actually very well driven, very good handling, definitely down on power, but it was interesting because their record time, they beat and then we went out and just barely beat it. So we weren't even expecting that to occur. Wow. Now, there are other tracks out there where you hold the record. So Sebring is one that we recently set a record at and then Barber Motorsports Park for a production vehicle. So like non-aero, there is a Plaid that actually has gone a little bit quicker with aerodynamics. Okay. Because these are a car that like have so much power that they can, you know, you can run big wings, big yeah. splitters, and it's gonna be faster because it's got the power. Um, so Barber Motorsports Park, Florida National Rally Sports 
park. There's there's going to be more to come. But and yeah. and that's the thing is there are more worlds to conquer. Yeah. Are there any tracks uh, you want to tease or not really? Not yet. No, I mean, I can tell you what's on our schedule. So yeah. next weekend we'll be at Daytona. Okay. Um, that will probably have happened by the time you see yeah. this. Yeah, and so if it is, I'll let you know so how it went. Weather willing, um, yeah. we should be able to set a EV record there. And, you know, it's not always just about setting EV records. It's about how does the com car compare to other production vehicles right. in its lap time. So like at Sebring, our time was I think third or fourth fastest ever for a production car. Right. And definitely, and it's a bit of a caveat, but definitely the fastest sedan ever. Right, and you're talking, when you say production car, you're talking we're million, talking, two, talking, three million dollar cars. Yeah, well we might be talking a, um, like a McLaren Senna, right? a GT3 RS, which isn't a million. No. <laughs> in a few years it might be worth right. that. Um, but no, it's serious, like the, all the cars that have the times faster are two-seater, Purpose, purpose built, so to speak, streetable track cars. Whereas this is literally something that did not have that full design intention. So it's it's very impressive what Tesla's done. Are there any um, kinds of races that you think uh, EVs are not yet suited for apart from rally? Uh, endurance racing, period. Yeah, just endurance yeah, racing. Yeah, I mean, a 24-hour 20, a race is not something that this is going to beat any gas car yet, even with battery swapping. Um, we're not there yet, but there are ones that I'm really keen to see more of, which is rally cross, rallying, yeah. that type of, because having taken my Teslas in the dirt and having driven rally cars, it's, these are really a lot of fun in the dirt. <laughs> now, have you done uh, Pikes Peak in internal combustion? Yeah, so I raced Pikes Peak when I was 18. I was the youngest rookie of the year at that Ooh. point. So we were racing a Honda at that time. Then we ran the Acura products, and so I've driven Pikes Peak in gas cars back when it was dirt, dirt to asphalt, and yeah, and raced, wow. I raced for 20 something years in internal combustion vehicles. So how do you like the weight, um, the lower center of gravity and the weight distribution of these EVs? I mean, ultimately, the, the way this car handles is, um, it's almost like a magic trick versus the actual scaled weight. So, like for example, many of the tracks where handling is very important, this vehicle actually has similar cornering speed when you're on similar tires to a Miata. Which, when when we started going to tracks with the Plaid and the Model 3, the fact that they were able to keep a cornering pace with a Miata, like, it blew me away. It was something where I was not expecting that. Now, the Plaid's a lot heavier than the 3? Yeah, about 400 pounds. That's not a lot, that's not a lot, so. Compared to having double the power. Right. I and mean, that, literally, it is double the power. Are there any tracks where you think a three, where you think you'd rather have a three than a plaid? Yeah, there actually would be some tracks that for a single, like, fast lap, um, depending on how they're equipped, the Model 3, the tighter the track, the more likely the Model 3 would be able to keep pace with it, um, which is, which makes sense. Tracks like Sebring, Daytona, the Model 3, if this, you know, Current configurations, no way. Right. But what was interesting is this year at Pikes Peak, because we had the baseline of a Model 3 performance as our record, we knew each of our segment times. And it, what I was expecting basically my second-ish practice run to have been at or above the pace of the Model 3, and it was considerably slower. Wow. In the lower section, which is a very rhythm section. So from a standpoint of the vehicle's dynamics and so on, it's also getting used to the extra girth, so to speak, sure. of this car, and power, because it's a totally different finesse. Sure, and more power is not always yeah, the winner. Yeah. It's not always quicker, yeah. Yeah, uh, you've, yeah. You've, you've seen uh, a good driver in an underpowered go-kart beat someone in a hot go-kart that doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty interesting. And, and I have to, to that point though, yeah. my entire career was made up of mostly driving the lightweight underdog cars. Oh. Not necessarily coming from a world of high horsepower, high performance vehicles. So most of the vehicles I would be, would be that momentum car. And actually that's paid dividends in racing the Tesla because none of the Teslas yet can thermally go full throttle for an entire session. Right. So that skill set of being able to maximize what is available is something that carried over to the Teslas. And as the thermal efficiency gets better and better, it's just something we kind of kind of build. So it, it's worked well. And that's really awesome. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put your channel up on the screen so everyone can go ahead and check it out. And Blake, uh, so awesome to meet you. I appreciated your talk today. And I wanna thank you for uh, giving me your time. Cool, man, we're having fun out here. Thank you. Cool.
So there it is, and there you go. You know how we do it. Uh, I wanted to thank my Patreons, as always, for their help, support, keeping the channel going. YouTube doesn't pay much at all, and I appreciate your help. You guys are the reason the channel exists. So, you know, uh, all that. It helps me avoid having to chase the algorithm. You know all that. But what I really need is subscribers. So subscribe if you made it this far. And let me know, what did I miss? What did I misunderstand? Leave me all your thoughts, your wisdom, your blind and brilliance in them in the comments below. And stay tuned, stay juicy. And I can't wait to hear from you clever robots in a matter of days when I post my new interview with Sandy Monroe from Monroe & Associates.